Hello everyone, welcome back. And in this video, we are going to talk about endocochlear potential. And this is just one of a small topic uh, which comes under the auditory sensation. And we are going to understand what creates by what mechanism endocochlear potential is developed and what is the applied aspect, what is the importance of this endocochlear potential. So let us get started. We will just uh, in a brief deal with the anatomy of the cochlea and then we will jump straight into the endocochlear potential. So basically cochlea as you can see in the diagram here it's a coil tubes and it is the coiled structure with three tubes coiled side by side alright and if you see the cross section in this diagram those three tubes makes three compartments. What are those three compartments? They are the scala vestibuli on top the scalar media in the middle and scalar tympani on the bottom. Now as compared to the external layer and the middle layer which are the air filled cavity, the inner ear, the cochlea is a fluid filled cavity. So in these three compartments there is fluid which is occupying the compartment and the fluid which is present in the scalar vestibuli and the scalar tympani are called perilymph these compartments are continuous that means at the end of the cochlea which is called as helicotrema they both communicate with each other and thus the composition of the fluid in same and it is called as a perilymph whereas the fluid which is present in scala media is different from the fluid which is present in the scala vestibuli and the scala tympani so this fluid which is present in the scalar media is called as endolymph okay which is different from the perilymph and that is what is the basis on what we are going to discuss about the endocochlear potential. Now as we were talking about the fluid inside this cochlea you can see here the fluid which is present in the scalar vestibular and scalar tympani are called as perilymph and the characteristic feature of this perilymph is it is low in potassium okay and the the composition of the fluid in the scalar vestibuli and scalar tympani is similar to the fluid which is present in the cerebrospinal space that is it is similar to the cerebrospinal fluid whereas the fluid which is present in the scalar media that is endolymph right so that endolymph is specially secreted by a structure called stria vascularis okay which is present on this surface and this structure is called as stria vascularis and this secretes the fluid which is present in scala media and the purpose behind that is the composition of this fluid is different okay as you can see this fluid which is present in the scala media is called as endolymph and how it is different from perilymph is it has high potassium concentration in that okay so now coming to the mechanism of development of endocochlear potential when you consider a potential you consider the potential across a membrane all right so as this is a diagram of resting membrane potential you can understand this endocochlear potential by uh, comparing it with the resting membrane potential. So what happens in the resting membrane potential you would have studied before is there is a membrane which is separating the cell okay the inside of the cell that is cytoplasm and the fluid outside of the cell that might be the uh, interstitial fluid alright and the composition of these fluids are different the intracellular fluid and the extracellular fluid the composition and the contents of various ions are different in those fluids and because by virtue of those uh, difference in the composition of ions what is happening is there is a electrical potential which is developing across the membrane and in general terms if we say that this is minus 80 millivolt and the negativity lies inside the cell membrane okay so in the inside of the cell membrane so this is the basis of resting membrane potential 
what is the basis is because of the difference of concentration of ions in the extracellular fluid and the intracellular fluid there develops a potential across the membrane and that potential is called as resting membrane potential and what is the value of that potential generally it will be minus 80 millivolts with negativity on the inside of the cell membrane all right and positivity outside so minus 80 millivolts is the resting membrane potential and that is how it was generated now if you see the endocochlear potential it is also a potential difference across the membranes now which membranes it is uh, across which membranes the endocochlear potential is developing it is developing across the two membranes the membrane the first membrane which is separating the scala media with the scala vestibuli and this membrane is called as the resinous membrane okay so this membrane is called as resinous membrane and this resinous membrane separates scala media from the scala vestibuli thus separating the two fluids the endolymph and the perilymph and the same thing happens in the uh, other two compartments that is the scala media and the scala tympani the basilar membrane which is present here is separating the scala media and the scala tympani so what is happening is the composition of scala vestibuli and scala tympani is same right so if we discuss about the endocochlear potential uh, with regard to these two compartments it will apply same for these two compartments also okay so let us discuss about these two compartments and the same applies to these two compartments also so what is happening here is since the endolymph is having high potassium concentration all right and the potassium is a positive ion as compared to the low potassium concentration which is present in the perilymph there is developing a potential across this membrane all right and that potential is uh, 80 millivolts positive 80 millivolts and that positivity is inside this scala media on towards the side of the scala media and that uh, potential which has developed because of the uh, difference in composition of potassium between the, uh, the two compartments that is the endolymph and the perilymph is called as the endocochlear potential right so i hope you understood what is endocochlear potential it is just like the resting membrane potential which was developed in case of uh, the cell membrane here in case of uh, the endocochlear potential it is developed inside the cochlea and it is between the membranes of the various compartments of the cochlea and this endocochlear potential is plus 80 millivolt which is positivity inside on the surface of the scalar media and this plus 80 millivolt is because of what because of the high potassium concentration in endolymph which is present in the scala media as compared to the low potassium concentration in the uh, perilymph which is present in scala tympani as well as in the scala vestibuli so this is the mechanism of development of a potential in these across these two membranes which is called as endocochlear potential now coming to the second aspect is what is the importance of this endocochlear potential so uh, the main importance of this endocochlear potential is its sensitizes it gives a sensitivity it increases the sensitivity of the hair cells which are present in the endolymph okay how does it do that so let us consider first that this is the hair cell and as you would have seen in the organ of corti all right so organ of corti is made up of uh, hair cells inner hair cells and outer hair cells uh, and the major contribution of the signal auditory signal comes from the inner hair cells so let us understand the potential which is inside the inner hair cells now uh, in the previous discussion we have already spoke about how endocochlear potential has uh, is formed okay but in this discussion we are going to compare the membrane potential of the inner hair cells okay we are not going to talk about the endocochlear potential now we are going to talk about the potential of in inner hair cells 
and the difference of potential in the two different part of inner hair cells that is the part of inner hair cells which is present embedded in the perilymph and the part of inner hair cells which is present in the endolymph okay so if we consider that perilymph has 0 millivolt okay so the inner hair cell which is embedded in the perilymph has the ionic composition which is different from the perilymph all right so the inner hair cells which is present in the perilymph has a ionic composition different from the perilymph inside the hair cell right so inside the cell by the virtue of its own uh, composition ionic composition it has a membrane potential of minus 45 millivolt all right so the inner hair cell and the membrane of inner hair cell uh, which is present in the perilymph okay so here we are talking about the uh, concentration gradient of perilymph as compared to the hair cell across the membrane of the hair cell so since the concentration is different in the perilymph and in the inner hair cell there occurs its own uh, resting membrane potential and that resting membrane potential of that part of inner hair cell is minus 45 millivolt all right but as we told that some part of the hair cells are extending outwards into the endolymph okay and since it is extending outward into the endolymph it already because of its concentration gradient it already has a potential of minus 45 millivolt but the composition of endolymph itself changes as compared to the perilymph okay so if the composition of endolymph is 80 millivolt here the difference will increase right so the part of the hair cell which is inside the endolymph as compared to the perilymph the endolymph is having plus 80 millivolts as compared to the 0 millivolts so the difference of the potential difference of the ionic concentration has uh, increased so much as compared to perilymph and thus the hair cell which is embedded in the endolymph will have a higher negative potential that is minus 125 minus 45 plus this 80 so minus 125 millivolt is a potential gradient across the membrane of the inner hair cell and the endolymph and that is the major benefit of the endolymph having different composition because that higher negative potential sensitizes the inner hair cells the part of the inner hair cells which are en embedded in the endolymph for an even a small change in the electric potential or even a small movement of this basilar membrane causes a change in the electrical potential and thus the increased sensitivity is there because of the uh, endocochlear potential or the because of different uh, potential which is present in the endolymph and that is how it is advantageous so that the auditory system is more sensitive towards even the small auditory stimulus so that is the major advantage of having the endocochlear potential i hope you would have understood the endocochlear potential and its importance by this discussion and thank you for watching